The final action of the Indianapolis Colts 2022 offseason has been completed, and now the next thing on the calendar is to start playing the games. But there's still one big box to check off. All that and more on today's episode of Locked on Colts. Let's get to it. You are Locked on Colts, your daily Indianapolis Colts podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Colts fans, thanks so much for tuning in and making us your number one listen of the day. This is your daily podcast covering your Indianapolis Colts, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Colts is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. That's prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. We are back and better than ever, my friends, maybe. I'm Jake Arthur, and I'm joined here by my PIC, Zach Hicks. Uh, it's been about a week since we were both in the saddle yep. together again. Yep. It's been, yeah, it's been about a week. Uh, thanks, of course, to our partner, Andrew Moore from HorseshoeHuddle.com for filling in for both of us, uh, me on Thursday, and then Zach on Friday. I missed you, man. Yeah, no, it's been a, you know, when you're an adult, the crazy stuff happens, you know, and, yeah. and, and I mean, you can attest just for me on my mm-hmm. side, I mean, just running around with funerals, a lot of funerals lately, which is a, it's just awful uh, stuff with my house, stuff with, you know, my mom's not doing great. So yeah, it's just been a lot right now, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to be back, man. I am glad to be back. I know you've had a lot of stuff going on too. So I'm glad that we could yeah. both sit down and talk some cults for the first time and, you know, like a week. Yeah, it's it's time to throw some stuff behind us because we, yes. we've got to get back to some normalcy, both of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, guys, on today's show, we're going to tell you who helped or hurt themselves for a chance to make the Colts roster back on Saturday against the Buccaneers. And then we'll predict that roster as the NFL roster cuts loom and are due by 4 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. Uh, please bear in mind, we are recording this about 5.30 on Monday, so... If something happens and we say something that is now incorrect, that is why we are not dumb. So just remember yeah, we that. We will we will put a disclaimer in the comments yeah. or in the show notes or whatever if if that happens. But knowing Chris Ballard, it wouldn't shock me if there's a trade coming here Monday night for mm-hmm. for you know cornerback depth or defensive tackle depth or something. He's always good for one every offseason. Yeah. So it wouldn't shock me. Yeah, those patented sixth round, seventh round pick swaps for a single player, that's money yeah. for him. Yeah, Matt but Pryor. He's... Matt Pryor was a good exactly. one last year. Yeah. I was gonna say it seems he's done well like that in the past. Uh, but just looking at some guys who you know impacted their their stock on Saturday, either or good or bad. Sam Ellinger, obviously, honestly, it seems like the biggest one, but he just kept doing what he's been doing. It's been at a great level, but I don't Quarterback is like the the first position you have to know what you're doing. So they've probably already known what they were going to do at that position, regardless of what happened Saturday. Yeah, no, it's it's super interesting with Sam Ellinger because I think Frank Reich said it best the other day in his press conference where Sam has done every single thing possible to make this mm-hmm. team. It's just yeah. it was always going to be tough for him to make it because they already had their top two guys. And, and honestly, if Ellinger completed every single pass this preseason – for 400 yards per completion, even like, you know, something <laughs> absurd that can't even happen. He still was not going to be QB2 Star Wars this numbers. Year. Yeah. He was never going to be QB2 this year. It's just, it, it's, that's what, ha- when the second they brought in Nick Foles, Sam Ellinger's chance of making the roster dropped a lot. Uh, but he came out and he did every single thing possible to make the team. So now it's at the point where I know with all of our roster predictions that we're going to be doing here and then over at Horseshoe Huddle, you know, we're all kind of penciling him in to make the roster, even though the team probably could use depth to other places because it's hard to just let him go right now. But, uh, you know, whatever the Colts do with that, I think it's the right decision if they let him go, if they trade him, if they keep him. You know, I could go either way with this. But, again, like Frank Reich said, it's a testament to Sam Ellinger that he came out and did every single thing possible to make this team and had a great offseason. It's just – it's a numbers game, and it's really tough at quarterback. That's exactly it. It's, you know – 
he couldn't have really done anything more, but at the end of the day, there's certain things you want to want the position to look like. And, you know, but what, what can you do? Uh, one of the guys he's loved throwing to, and today was, it was, I think it was just kind of a, a cherry on top. Desmond Patman had a, a nice player too Saturday. Considering he's been kind of a late bloomer in camp and has started to do a little more, he wasn't necessarily an absolute lock, but now I would be downright shocked if he didn't if he didn't make it. Yeah, you know it's funny. Our, our guy uh, Brent, uh, fan of Nuance on on Twitter, did mm-hmm. mention you know maybe he could be flipped to a team like Chicago who needs a receiver. Uh, that wouldn't shock me, but again, I do think Desmond Patman's going to make this team. The Colts have have put a lot invested into his development. And this offseason, we're even seeing him do a lot more on special teams than what he has in past offseasons. Yeah. Uh, so you're seeing the growth. You're seeing the production here in the preseason. I think they're going to want to keep him as wide receiver five or six. Uh, and and I do think he solidified that spot on the roster where for a lot of this offseason on this podcast, we were saying, you know, Kiki Cootie's overtaking him and stuff like that. But uh, he, he really came on strong the last two weeks. And I, I do think he secured a roster spot. Mm-hmm. And uh, flipping to the other side of the ball, someone who's been really polarizing and we were really questionable about it after Detroit. Mm-hmm. But now it's gotten a little interesting again after Tampa. Ben Banigou had a really good game Saturday. And he absolutely needed to in order to, to make that last pitch for, hey, I need to be on the team. Yeah, I think it's, it's a tough call because I do think if Eddie Odenigbo has played himself into a, lo- a roster lock at this point too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do think with Ben Banigou, the way he played this past game, the way he looked in week one against the Bills – and, you know, a kind of what we've seen this whole offseason, you kind of have to have him on the roster. I think, you know, he's, he's a pure speed rusher, a nice rotational guy to have, even if it's only five to 10 snaps a game, you know, that's, that's something that he can give you off the bench. So I, I think he's kind of like Patman where I could see him maybe getting flipped to another team uh, if, if there's some interest there. But for the most part, I think he's going to be here uh, this season. I think he should make the roster. Mm-hmm. And then the the position inside, I I think there we might see some chaos compared to what we once thought. And you know, I I know you can echo that. You know, for example, the the Bucks ran for forty seven yards and a touchdown on just eight carries in the second quarter. It's that interior defensive line depth. It just hasn't materialized. Yeah, they need to make a move there. Uh, they they mm-hmm. absolutely need to make a move there. And and you know, again, this podcast, the Curtis Brooks podcast. I think this preseason has shown that he needs a year on the practice squad. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I really like his game. I love his upside. He had some good flashes, but uh, it, it just seems like the practice squad makes the most sense for him. He's just not hes not really acclimated to the NFL, and I don't think he's going to be ready for a significant role yet. Uh, Eric Johnson, I think, should make the team, but you should have a one tech that you're ready to play before him. Mm-hmm. Uh, these other guys, you know, Chris Williams didn't really impress me. RJ McIntosh didn't really impress me. Uh, Byron Cowart didn't really impress me. So I, I do think they need to make a move there. You know, there's a couple of free agents uh, and then waiver wire guys that are going to be available that, you know, if Chris Ballard makes a waiver wire move this year, I think defensive tackle is the prime position because they, they desperately need somebody else there right now. Yeah, no doubt. I'd be downright shocked if they didn't make a move at that position. I think everyone expects them to. And then just kind of, I'll, I'll, I'll group these guys together because they're all kind of in the same boat. Uh, Sterling Weatherford, Anthony Chesley, and Rodney Thomas, I thought all played really good games. Uh, yeah. Really happy with what we saw from all them. And being the the final dress rehearsal and audition, I think they passed. Yeah, Chesley's, I mean, I, yeah. Yeah. Chesley's the most interesting one there. Because I think Weatherford mm-hmm. and Thomas are, again, not saying locks, but I'm saying like very, very close to locks. I think both of those yeah. players, I think both of them are going to make it. Chesley's yeah. tough because Tony Brown's probably still a better special teamer and can play mm-hmm. inside and outside. But if the Colts keep six corners, I think he has played himself as that six corner. Uh, it just depends on how they want to do it. You know, do they value Chesley's cornerback ability and special teams ability over maybe a fifth safety like Trevor Denbo, for instance? That'll be interesting to see what which way they go there because both guys are probably in that same category where it's like they're barely going to play on defense, but their their key is special teams. Now, who do you value more there? Uh, so, but I do think Chesley did a great job in, in this final game of kind of saying, look, I deserve to be on this roster. And he had a, he had a strong game. But the, but the other two players, uh, Weatherford and Thomas, I do think uh, they should have solidified themselves in this one. They looked really good. Yeah, like you said, kind of a numbers numbers game thing for me with, um, with corner. If they keep six, I think it's Chesley. But I totally understand if it's just five for them. 
Right. And so, you know, the, the team, by the way, it looks like a storm is rolling in. So if you guys, you guys see me get booted off, that is why. Um, so none of us envy the picks that these guys have to make the front office and the coaching staff this weekend. Uh, but you know, it's never too early to start looking at some of our own low impact picks here. Uh, you know, if you want a little extra money as the NFL season nears, you know, right now, for example, I've got my eyes on Matt Ryan's week one matchup against the Texans as prize picks has set him for more or less at 230.5 passing yards. I think that's interesting because you you say at first, yeah, sure, of course he's going to go over, but what if Jonathan Taylor runs for 160 yards? You know, that, that probably puts Naheem Hines at 50, 60 yards also. So you really just don't know there. Uh, but however you're going to look at it, it's super easy to do this on prize picks. Just hop on prizepicks.com, choose whatever sport you're looking to make picks for, and go to town making your more or less than selections. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the available projections. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. From the NFL, MLB, golf, women's college basketball, even stuff like esports, disc golf, and cricket, guys. Your entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. If you're jonesing for a little pick to make just right before a game on, on Sundays, there you go. go hit the app and, and uh, fire away. Your entries, yep, in 30 seconds. You can make safe and fast withdrawals, and Price Picks is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Price Pick at Price Picks app or go to PricePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. I'm very good at speaking today, everyone. <laughs> you did your best. Moron. You did your best. <laughs> oh, man. I could not have sounded dumber. Let's try this one. Thanks again for making Locked on Colts your first listen every day. Make sure you check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview starting August 31st. An eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts, such as us, of the Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey NFL Insiders all combining into one Ultimate NFL Preview. Starting August 31st, search for Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Zach. So, offensive side of the ball, we are cracking down and predicting rosters. Uh, just looking at quarterback, do you think they carry all three? <sighs> I I think they do, at least mm -hmm. initially. You know, I think someone made a really good point the other day. I can't remember if it was Joel A. Erickson or if it was Zach Kiefer or someone, but the Colts do typically reserve a couple spots on their 53-man roster for weekly inactive players, for players mm -hmm. that are going to be inactive every week. They just don't want to lose them. You know, it's been Desmond Patman in the past. It's been Mike Strawn in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that could probably be a place for Sam Ellinger, you know, depending on how this team – views depth at other positions but i do think they're going to find a way to make space for him again unless there's like a trade offer or something coming in but i do think his progression this offseason has been good enough to where you can say yeah he warrants a, a spot on the 53-man roster so i do think he he makes the team and the colts carry three quarterbacks at least at the beginning of the year mm, yeah same here and guys uh, you'll find both of our final roster predictions over at horseshoehuddle.com so this is kind of us just going a little quicker in depth on it uh, running back, I could only justify myself keeping three. Yeah, I just couldn't. When you look at the space that some of these other positions take, I just went with Taylor Hines and Lindsey. Yeah, I mean, I think the only other player would potentially be Deion Jackson because of special teams yeah. ability. Yeah. But that's tough. <laughs> that one's tough. Uh, I'd probably lean three personally. I mm -hmm. think the Colts might keep four and just keep Jackson for that special teams ability. But I, I could really see this one going either way. I think this is one of the tougher decisions there. You know, do they mm -hmm. keep Deion Jackson for special teams or do they just go with three and go a little lighter on, on offense? But 
I think there's only three that are worth making it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think if I had to guess, I think they want Jackson and or Devontae Price on the practice squad. Right. Um, they'll figure out running back. It's not like a super critical position, but like if they have to make a move at some point, they always can. But three, more than three almost seems like a luxury right now. Yeah. Uh, move, moving to receiver, I gave him the sixth. Uh, Patman and Strawn being wide receivers, five and six. Yeah, no, I agree there. You know, obviously, again, Michael Pittman Jr., uh, Alec Pierce, Paris Campbell, Ashton Doolin, those four guys are completely safe. The, mm. It's kind of a little bit of a debate at the bottom, but I do think it's it's pretty secured right now with it being Des Patman and Mike Strawn. Just kind of linking this conversation with running back, though, if you have a player like Strawn who really hasn't done much on special teams really at all in his career mm. at this point, it's hard to not have another running back to have like another special teamer there. Cause you already have yeah. now a bottom of the roster guy. Who's not going to be much on special teams. Now Patman looks like he's going to be this year. So that's different, but that's tough. It's just a tough, it's the way the numbers come out. But I do think six receivers is how the Colts are going to play it this year. I think uh, Patman and Strawn, and, you know, maybe they make a waiver claim or a trade, but I do mm. think they're going to stick with those two guys, which they have for, you know, last year as well. Yeah, and not for nothing, but Strawn has been doing more special team stuff. So that, I mean, not only is that a way to get on the roster, but to stay on it, maybe be one of those weekly inactive stashes, you know, who, who right. knows what they want to do again. Uh, tight end, just the three guys. The unfortunate part of it, the Drew Ogletree IR situation kind of paves the way for them to just do three mm -hmm. and makes a little more room at, at other positions. It, it allows them to keep six receivers here. Yeah, yeah, no, I do think that that's the way it's going to go. I mean, Mike, Michael Jacobson, I think, had a pretty good preseason. Like, I I think he oh, was he, solid. He's a practice squad guy for me. I, yeah. I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, no, I think he's definitely a practice squad guy. And and I could see maybe a waiver claim at tight end, like a really surprising, you know, waiver claim at tight end just to add, like, a blocker to the group because I do think they are missing, outside of Molly Cox, like a strong blocker. Uh, but I do think it's yeah. those three guys are definite locks, and and I don't think anyone on this current roster makes it besides those three guys. Yeah, and I think so. Offensive line, I think for the most part, is kind of it's already kind of worked itself out. It's just looking at like who is the ninth or tenth guy, however many you're going to pick. Right. Obviously, Pryor, Nelson, Kelly, Pinter, Smith, your starters. Um, Ryman and Will Fries are obviously in there. Dennis Kelly, as long as he's coming back sometime soon, you know, you, you keep him on right. there. I don't who knows about any injured list or whatever. And then I had my final guy is Wesley French. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is another spot where the Colts probably need to add some outside help. Uh, again, this could be another one of those uh, six rounders for a seventh rounder and another player type trades, uh, much mm -hmm. like they did with, with Matt Pryor last year, because, mm -hmm. you know, they have the seven guys that are definite locks to make the team. Dennis Kelly's mm -hmm. almost certainly a lock as well, but we don't know when he's going to be back. You know, he could be back. I mean, at this point, we don't really have any clarity on that injury. He could be back, you know, in week, you know, 15 for all we know. Like, we have no clue. Yeah. Uh, so as long as he's out, you probably need to add another tackle. You know, a guy who can play right tackle, probably a guy who can also – uh, ideally play some guard as well kind of again like a Matt Pryor last season uh, just in case you know to have that ninth lineman because I don't think Wesley French did enough for me uh, this this offseason to kind of right. warrant warrant that ninth spot to where I'm not looking outside so I do think there are essentially eight locks on the offensive line I know the Colts typically like to carry nine or ten though uh, so they I, I do think this is another spot where Either they'll claim someone, or I do think we might get a surprise where it's like, oh, Jordan Murray made the roster. Why did Jordan Murray make the roster and stuff? And it's because and they felt like they needed to have more tackle depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think at offensive tackle, you're exactly right with Kelly and having to make decisions built around that and his availability. But I was going to say, I don't I don't know that that other guy's on there. So a roster yeah. move makes a lot of sense. And, you know, we got to keep in mind, it looks like – people make rosters all the time. And then a day or two later when waiver claims come through, whoop, there they go. You know, right. so that, that right. could be another instance where Jordan Murray makes it, but then some guy who started 20 games in his career becomes available. And now he's, he's a pickup for the Colts. Right, uh, right. We'll go ahead and just bundle special teams into this. There's really not much to say. Uh, Rodrigo Blankenship won the kicking battle. Uh, Matt Hawk at punter. Now they haven't put Rigo on IR yet, but 
Maybe they're going to wait to do that until the season starts so that he's eligible to return at some point. That'd be my guess. Because if they put him on IR now, his season's officially done. But yeah. if they wait, then he could always come back at some point. But, I mean, Matt Hawk's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, Rigoberto Sanchez is a very – he's above average NFL punter. But I don't know if you need to – sit and wait on that like just ride with matt hawk for the year i don't know why you wouldn't yeah i'll say this real quick because i know we got to move on but i think that's kind of absurd <laughs> to have that optimism yeah. considering that sanchez tore his achilles yeah <laughs> like, like that's i don't know i don't know what they're doing there i think they'll put him on ir here before uh the the cut down but mm-hmm. i don't know why they haven't done it yet so yeah it's, it's the achilles of- for a punter and it's either i think it's his left i think right at, left, I, correct. I, yeah. I think well, it's regardless, the, it's either yeah. his plant leg or his kicking leg, and that seems <laughs> right. pretty punk rock to come back from an Achilles <laughs> injury for that. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know, but let's let's get yeah. some let's get a little serious here, guys. Before we talk some defense, uh, next we want to tell you guys about a message from the NHTSA Impaired Driving Campaign. Are you one of those people who thinks it's okay to drive stoned? What's what's the worst that could happen? You could end up driving below the speed limit. It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is reaction times slow down when you're high. You not only put yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself. It's not okay to drive high. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. On a lighter note, we do want to shout out Homefield, the awesome clothing brand who got us these sick shirts that we're wearing right now. Uh, guys, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Jake's, you know, going to do a little spin, right? You're going to do a little spin too, Jake? Oh, I could do that. <laughs> All right. There's not much space to spin. <laughs> there we go. There you go. No logo on the back on that one. But seriously, That's guys. That's showbiz, Homefield, baby. Right, right. But seriously, guys, Homefield sent us some really cool uh, products or whatever that they, from their new release. Uh, it, it's just been awesome. I'm telling you, this is the most comfortable, like, shirt I have right now. Uh, so we'd like to introduce you guys to our new sponsor, Homefield. If you've been around the cold stuff at all this weekend, you've probably seen or heard about Homefield if you didn't realize. They're a premium collegiate apparel brand based here in Indy. They've got awesome college designs for whoever you root for. But being a local brand to Indianapolis, the Colts reached out to Homefield for an exclusive partnership to launch this collection of Homefield Colts apparel, which we just showed off for you guys. This is Homefield's first collection, and they're super excited for the opportunity to work with the Colts. Homefield and the Colts work together exclusively to make this co-branded collection bring Indianapolis together. This collection has six items, a hoodie, a crew neck, two t-shirts, joggers, and a pretty slick jacket. This is the perfect collection to kick off the season. Need something new to wear on Sundays? Go to Homefield right now. This collection just launched on Saturday, the 27th. Homefield was nice enough to hook us up with some gear, which again, we just we just went crazy about showing you guys. Jake did a little spin if you guys are on YouTube. Ooh, yeah. And honestly, I think again, the style is nice, but the comfort, A plus, A plus. Uh, new customers can get 15% off their purchase from Homefield with code locked on Colts at checkout at homefieldapparel.com. All right, Jake, let's run through some defense now. Uh, let's do it. I think let's let's start with defensive tackle because <laughs> <laughs> this one should we I think I think whoever we put behind the two studs is subject to change after this because yeah. I I don't feel good about the things behind it and unfortunately for me I'm not gonna have Curtis Brooks make the team I know we talked about that at the beginning I'm gonna have Curtis mm-hmm. Brooks as a practice squad guy I think DeForest Buckner Grover Stewart obviously your studs your starters I think Eric Johnson makes it and then I'd probably just put like Chris Williams in there as a placeholder for mm-hmm. right now. Uh, but I, I do think they, they need to make a move here. I just do not. I, again, Eric Johnson, I think you should have on there just to protect him. But I think Curtis Brooks will be fine on the practice squad all year. I don't think you'll lose him. Yeah. The moves I've got on here are subject to change, but I've actually got five on there now. But I think I think moves will be impending. I have RJ McIntosh, Chris Williams, and Eric Johnson behind, yeah. behind uh, the starters. Just, I have no idea what else to do there. Like, right, right. Yeah, I, I don't not, think the Colts do. Like, that may be the final group they decide on. Yeah, I'm not loving defensive tackle, but going defensive end, I'm feeling pretty good at defensive end. 
Uh, you know, I think they have a really solid top four in Yannick Nagakwe, mm. Quiddy Pei, uh, Taekwon Lewis, and Dio Dengbo. And also those having those guys kind of lessens the need at three tech because you got Dio and you got Taekwon Lewis. So that really yeah. helps. And then I also have a Fetty Adenigbo making it and Ben Bandigu making it as, as my defensive ends. The only difference for me, I did it. I did not, I did not have Ben Banigou on there. I could see it. I just I mean, figured I it, it was a lot. Of, I just figured it was a lot of guys to carry, a lot of defensive linemen specifically since I had five tackles. And I just figured if Fetty Adenigbo probably gives you more of a sure thing. Right. Banigou just still seems like a guy you're probably waiting on. And I just right. don't. And in year four, I just don't know that they'll be willing to still wait. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised at all if they keep him. But just for my exercise here, I did not keep him. Yeah, my only pushback would be I swear if they keep R.J. McIntosh over <laughs> to yeah. the preseason. But again, McIntosh was running with the first team guys the other day. So mm-hmm. who knows with that. But yeah, whew, these yeah the defensive line is kind of weird this year because defensive tackle is so subject to change. But we have some optimism. Linebacker is awesome. I love Linebacker these linebackers. Awesome. Yeah. Like they might keep two or three of these guys on the practice squad because I, I mean, I love these linebackers. I think obviously you have Leonard who we don't know if he's going to actually count against the 53 to start. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can put an asterisk next to him or whatever. You don't know if he's actually going to count against the 53, but you know, Leonard Franklin, Okereke and EJ speed are definitely making the roster. I think Sterling Weatherford is pretty much a lock at this point. And I still think Jojo Doman should be in the, in there too. Mm-hmm. I think those, I think those six should all make it. Uh, and I think Weatherford, Doman, Speed, Franklin, I think they're going to be just prime special teams guys uh, this season. So I think, I think it's smart to keep all six there, but I do like Forrest Ryan and James Skalski mm-hmm. as practice squad guys. I, I think this linebacker group is just really loaded from top to bottom. I have that. I have that exact thing. You know, the, those six guys. I would even be cool with with Skalski and Ryan on uh, on the practice squad. I th- I think honestly that's been one group that's been a strength throughout camp. So right, no arguments for me on that one. Yep. And then cornerback. I think you said did you go with five or did you go with six when you were? I went. With, I went with six. Six corners and four safeties. Yeah. So I went with five and five. So we'll just lump yeah. the defensive backs together. Uh, mm-hmm. For me, I went obviously a corner and safety. The guys you are keeping for sure is uh, Stefan Gilmore, Kenny Moore, Brandon Faison, and Isaiah Rogers at yeah. corner. And then at safety, you have Nick Cross, Rodney McLeod, and Julian Blackman are all making it. And then it gets a little muddy after that. You know, I think Tony Brown mm-hmm. and Rodney Thomas are both pretty safe. I think they're both fairly safe. You know, Rodney Thomas and, and uh, Tony Brown. I think it's for that special team spot at the bottom there that it gets a little muddy. You know, do you keep Trevor Denbo? Do you keep Anthony Chesley? Do you keep Marvell Tell? So I think it go either way with that, but I, I personally went Denbo and I think you, you went Chesley, right? Yeah. So after, after how highly Frank Reich spoke about Tony Brown, that just seemed like a, not right. a shoe in, but so I put Tony Brown in as five with Anthony Chesley coming in at, at six, that he was, he was my sixth. I just think, you know, they had him around last year. He had a really strong summer, particularly in the preseason games. And I just, I wanted to make sure I, I kept him on there. He seems, he seems like they'd want to, want to add him. Yeah. I would say whoever doesn't make it between those two, between Chesley and, and Denbo, I think they're going to be the, like the first practice squad guys to throw in there. Like they're going to be like the first guys are like, Hey, come back to the practice squad. Cause those are your, those are key practice squad guys where, you know, you can call them up on any Sunday to be a very quality special teams player. So whoever doesn't make it between those two, I think will still be around this team uh, for at least the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. And then, so for my safety depth, you, you mentioned the three that are, are pretty much locks. Uh, but Rodney Thomas is the other guy I got in there. I'm really, I was really happy that he started to show some things in the last couple of weeks. Cause I think I had mentioned, you know, early in training camp, I literally couldn't have noticed him less, you know, and yeah. then one, it's like once the Colts were like, hey, he's the second free safety on the unofficial death chart, and we're actually going to start giving him these these looks with the ones and twos, then I started to notice him. And then in these games, he is such a sure tackler. Like, right. you don't want your, your free safety making a ton of tackles, but he's cleaning up mistakes from guys in front of him a lot of yeah. the time. Him, him and Sterling Weatherford really – 
came on strong these last couple yeah, of weeks. And they sure. both were, they both came out after like, you know, again, this whole preseason we're talking, we're saying, Hey, these guys aren't really stepping up in camp, but we do like the potential of them. These last couple of weeks it became, Oh, Sterling Weatherford and Rodney Thomas need to make the team because they're yeah. playing really well. Uh, so I love that both those guys came out to play and, and both kind of, you know, took their roster spots that they should have already been given. Yeah. They, they've both got a ton of upside and maybe they could get him onto the practice squad. I don't know why you wouldn't just keep them on the roster at yeah. this point. They both look capable of playing like Weatherford shouldn't ever play beyond special teams right now anyways, but Thomas, I don't think he'd be an absolute disaster if you had to play him in a game. Like it wouldn't be great, but it's not going <laughs> to kill the team. Basically we've seen, We've seen super bad safety play before. <laughs> we have. We have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that puts a bow on these roster predictions, guys. Remember that we're doing this probably before news is about to come out, but this is our best guess as things currently stand. Um, we'll be back with you tomorrow as we break down the actual Colts brand spanking new 53-man roster. And as we know, the Colts love to tinker after cuts are made. So we'll keep an eye on some guys on the chopping block around the league who we think makes sense for the Colts to pick up as well. Absolutely. Make sure you guys are following Jake on Twitter at JakeArthurNFL. You can follow me on there as well at ZachHicks2. Again, we're going to have roster predictions for Horseshoe Huddle coming up. Uh, So make sure you subscribe to that site. You're following that site. and And again, you're following us there on social media. Uh, Subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. I think we are only like 40 subscribers away. Oh, we're getting real. We're getting real close. We got a couple days to close this. So we got like three or four days. We need like 10 subscribers a day to get there. So we are getting really close to that thousand subscriber goal uh, by the end of August. You guys are killing it. Just keep it up. And then wherever you listen to our podcast, you know, rate, review, subscribe. Make sure that we are the first podcast you listen to every single morning. Uh, And we love you guys. You guys are awesome right now. Mm -hmm, No doubt. And so next, go make Locked On Fantasy Football your next lesson. Fantasy expert Vinny Iyer brings over 20 years of NFL expertise and a unique angle to give you the moves that no one else has. Get ready for your fantasy draft and then the season with Locked on Fantasy Football. We'll see you guys tomorrow.